Welcome back, members. This is just for you. Part two of our conversation with Xavier Hayes, Aliens in Ancient Egypt. Most definitely. Now, the reptilians, these aliens, are they behind the Brotherhood of the Serpent? Yeah, that, that all that knowledge stems from them. You know, they're a little mm-hmm. cold. That's why all, you know, the ones that have survived, and of course... It, made a, it morphs into the Templars and, and different fractions as history, because it's thousands and thousands of years old, you know? Um, I don't think uh, the physical, you know, I don't believe the physical traits have remained. Uh, they might at some like way, like at a level you can even comprehend, <laughs> you know, like a level maybe there's some above even like the Rothschilds or what, what we conceive of being people in charge. I'm sure there's People in actual charge, you can't even imagine, you know who they are. Uh, right. But I think mostly it's it's that evil is kind of like an interdimensional thing. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure, too sure, unless there's other reptilians who who are visiting or who knows, you know, maybe have gone underground or survived. But I think uh, most of that, which we used to be in the open, you know, because a lot of ancient, it's in all ancient world cultures, and, and I, and see to me. You know, I, I kind of break this down because to me that was the most, besides the Akhenaten stuff, it was important to to really talk about the reptilian uh, topic, right? Because this is the most, you know, ridiculed and hated on basic topic of the alien question, you know? And kind of, you know, everyone, it, it kind of stems from David Icke. And it's funny how everything that guy has talked about has basically come true. It, it except, has. Yeah, yeah, except for the one thing that's impossible to prove, which is the reptilian thing. So, <laughs> if he was right about 99% of the rule, it's like if he was right about 99% of everything else, you know, I think maybe we should listen to him about what he has to say about the reptilian issue is too, I mean, right? You know, so. Yeah. There, there's, you know, there's a lot going on there. But I kind of brought it so far back that it wasn't even necessary to to claim that it was alien because uh, during my research, uh, I found a a paleontologist who postulated that because the Troodon dinosaur had the biggest brain mass of any known animal during its time, during the dinosaur days, that if the actual event that supposedly killed them all didn't kill the Troton, and if it was the Troton was left to evolve naturally, it would have grown a brain bigger and more been more advanced than at a faster rate than humans. So just based on little evolution, uh, the reptilian upright man could have developed before humans. And what if he had been visited by, who knows, maybe another reptilian or someone else or a humanoid figure, and maybe that's where you get these myths of the you know, because it's funny in all the cultures, right? The the reptilian was the one who gave the knowledge. Right, right. You know? So what if he was actually, you know, upright and and was just kind of bored or pissed and, and was mad at his creators and was, you know, like kind of throw a monkey wrench in their game, like he rebelled. You know, like you know what? Mm-hmm. I, I'm gonna yeah. let these. I'm gonna let these little humanoid, you know. I'm, I'm going to give them some, some knowledge <laughs> Yeah. and let's see and, what happens. And, you know, I've always wondered about that missing link because, you know, it, it's evident when you look at cultures who have been uh, completely isolated, uh, like some in New Guinea and the, the Tassidays in the Philippines, uh, they're still in the Stone Age, basically. Of and course. And so that speaks to the fact that, okay, <laughs> we shouldn't be where we are. 
you know, if we had not been uh, interfered with or helped along a bit. I'm glad you mentioned that because I talk about that, about the Sky Colts and John Frum. And, you know, John Frum was an African-American fighter pilot during World War II who crash landed in, you know, around Papua New Guinea. And the Aborigines there, they, after he left, they turned him into a god, you know, basically like yeah. they recreated his airplane, you know, <laughs> they, it blew their minds. And this was Check in the it Makes you think of Star Trek. Of <laughs> course. So if these dudes had this problem in the 40s, imagine thousands of years ago. Right, right. So somebody has interfered and uh, lifted us up, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> and and I think, you know, you speak about evil and you speak about the horrible things that, that people do to one another and, and to other folks. Yeah, um, so much of it. What it says to me is that uh, our spirituality, you know, is not evolved. You know, where where maybe the, the mentality, the, the brain, uh, the ingenuity and, and whatever, all of that is is evolved beyond what it's supposed to. But spiritually, perhaps we're not ready for all of that. And yeah, well, it's, it's beat out of us. I mean, like all of our psychic abilities are beat out of, out of us as children. Mm-hmm. We're bombarded with fluoride, which calcifies right. the pineal gland, um, uh, the doctrination, the, the the people that are in charge, they're obviously not, not good people because there's so much, our culture, the television, the violence, uh, it's, it's, it's a mess, not to mention all the prescription pills and yeah. mental diseases. It's horrible. This, and to me, you know, the, the, whoever the alien scientists, gods were, cause, cause my biggest problem is, is trying to explain to people there's a difference between uh, God and the and the misinterpretation of God. Now, God uh, is is the universe. It's a spiritual. Is each one of us has a sacred connection to it? You know, right? God with a capital G. Exactly. It's all it's private between me and God. You know, like we all have a spiritual, and it reacts. Everyone's the same if you know how to understand the universe, and you understand that it's. Based, the universe is based on your thoughts and emotions, vibrational frequencies. You know, it's the power, the secret. It's you creating your own reality, like the, the Hindus talk about it. And you know, it's it's true. It's you know, when you feel when you're when you're around negative people and you're negative, negative stuff happens. It, it when does. When you're positive, it, exactly. When you create and you know, when you're on that vibe and that wavelength, uh, it's, I'm telling you, it's powerful. So, and those emotions, Xavier. I mean, those emotions, you know, let you know when you're thinking in the wrong direction. Yep. And that's why it's always good well. to go get first instinct. <laughs> right. You know, how many times, how many times have you not gone with your first instinct and been like, ah, oh, you know, mm-hmm. that's always there. So, you know, that's it's so real. So, so understanding within us that, exactly. that they're really trying to snuff out. They're of fearing course. it. And yeah. we don't even understand how to use, you know, 90% of our brain or our DNA. Right. Imagine that. It would be like Buddha, like teleporting across the river to help people and stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, so that's one aspect. And then, of course, the other aspect is uh, understanding the physical God, which is misinterpretation, right? You know, okay. at some point there had to have been some sort of... Uh, alien scientists or humanoid scientists or whatever, right. a, physical, a physical to to be able to do the experiments and to be able to manipulate. Like, you know, when you when you go explore space, you have a whole bunch of different people with different skill sets, right? Exactly. You know? So this is, like, whoever gave us this has to have been something like that, you know? It's, you just can't snap your fingers and, and, and be all smart and everything. You know, there has to no, be. No, no, no. <laughs> the, the, the the genetics were manipulated at some level, you know, and that's cool too. That's that's awesome, you know. And it it, it reminds me of the scene in uh, Contact uh, when Jodie Foster like, meets her father, and, her, oh, and then yeah. and then the father turns to the alien because he was like, "Look, we're trying to. It's easier for you to understand it this way. That's why I projected that form. However, we don't know either." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, the eternal question 
You know, yeah. who are and, we? Why are we here? Where do we come from? <laughs> and that's why I love the Egyptian stuff. That's why I, when I broke down all the texts, the UFO encounters, I also make sure to include a lot of the poetry because you're talking fantastic, phenomenal, metaphysical, deep poetry, like the deepest, I mean, the deepest poetry ever, period. You know, I, I, and I, I'm a poet myself, so, and I love Alpha Lord Tennis, and I love the, the classics. But I love the, it. But the Egyptian. Can you share some with us right now? Give us, uh, I, give us a I, little I don't, bit. Give us a little off. Come on. I don't have any with me. I, I don't, but I don't have the book on me. I would read it. I would read some from there. But just, you know, I wanted to make sure that it was, un, you know, people understood that we're not just, it's beyond just the alien stuff. You know, there's a deep, that culture. And the Egyptian people, which, you know, were, had to make which maintained you know these legacies right you know right and right so so this is a, it speaks to that tremendously just reading the poetry and, and you know that's why it says on the seer of a million years right you can never mm-hmm. see my face <laughs> like there you go I mean, what more do you need to say yeah, it's beautiful I, I want everyone to get a hold of this book i i love chapter 11 get your ass to mars <laughs> total recall yeah, that's right yeah th- this book is awesome and uh, you go into a whole lot of deep stuff that I know we don't want to talk about on the air because um, you are on the front lines and uh, and hats off to you hats off I to you I've uh, you. interviewed um, Bishago and um he, he's an awesome guy. I, I look forward to seeing what he's going to do. He says he's going to run for president, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. He's, uh, <laughs> he's an <laughs> interesting guy yeah. there, for sure. Yes, indeed. Yeah, he's he's here in uh, in the state of Washington as well. He is. He is. He is. I, mm-hmm. you know, I, I corresponded with him, and, you know, I, I it's important for me to, to be fair to everybody. Mm-hmm. And and as a researcher, as a, and you know, I'm a serious writer. Like I, I take this real seriously. This is this is work. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is this is a lot of well, work. It's evident and, that you do your work. It's evident. And, yeah. And I wanted to make sure everyone got a fair shake, and, and you know, that's why I I talked about him as well. And you know, it's who knows? Maybe he's he's correct, or maybe he is. You know, has a great imagination. You know, I know Washington State. It's definitely a, an artist zone, so that's that's one thing. Um, but you know, I I want everyone to to have a fair assessment, and and I believe that's important. So, because now I, I'm not trying to make you know I'm not trying to force anything down your throat. I want you to just read it and make your own opinion, and it's right. cool. And and you can write me, and you know I'm open. You know I'm on Facebook. Write me, ask questions. You know, I I have an online metaphysical library, ExavierVision.com, that has a whole bunch of free books, uh, all kinds of different metaphysical topics and history and radio interviews, and everything's free. And I just I think it's important that you know we don't limit ourselves because some of the, some of the negative stuff I get uh, from doing this book uh, has come from. Uh, kind of small-minded uh, people who take more of like an Afrocentric approach and kind of, you know, I'm a white boy, so they're like, oh, you know, they kind of get mad, they get defensive and say, you know, my people built that, you know, like oh, aliens didn't do that, right? And I've had a couple people kind of say this to me and it's, it's kind of, you know, I get it, you know, it's part of you know this this job, right, you know? But, yeah. but it's funny because I'm like, dude, you got to read the book. <laughs> you, you can say exactly. all this, but read the book first. You know, I read all these dudes, Ivan von Sertema, you know, all all of the chemistology stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I have to read it to make the book, to, to like get all, you have to read everything. That's what I want to say. You know, you just, you got to make sure you read everybody's work as it pertains it to right these here. topics. You put it all right here for everyone to read it. And you can tell who didn't read it. You know, so oh, for sure. Of so course. All right. <laughs> but I but I appreciate it because I mean, you know, and everything is well referenced and sourced and of course the images in the book, I mean, the detail is just painstaking. And uh and you're a true 
true scholar. And, you know, again, I just can't say enough. That's why I had to have you on so that I could share it, spread the word so that people will know that, that this book is out there. Now, you, you mentioned your website. So please, you know, before we get off the air, uh, please share that contact information. I know you're on Facebook and you stay in touch with folks, so please share. Yeah, um, basically if you just search my name, uh, Xavier and Hayes, uh, you know, you'll find me on Facebook. You add me, you can message me. Uh, I do have a blog, xavierandhayes.blogspot.com. There's a whole bunch of stuff I've written on other topics, you know, lost cultures as well, but there's a lot. You know, a lot of stuff there, and uh, the Xavier Vision website, you can write me there as well, and that's uh, like an online metaphysical library. So there's plenty if you're seeking the truth and you're, if you're looking for knowledge, and you know, everyone's into certain things at different times in their lives, and I try to put as much well rounded uh, things there that you know you might, you might be interested in. So, yeah, I mean, I'm approachable. And I love this sort of thing, and I love to hear from people, you know, and I love answering questions. I don't know at all, you know, like I I know, I can only help with what, you know, points you in the right direction as best I know. Yeah, and that's why I love your approach. It's it's an all things considered approach. Open up the mind and, uh, and trust that heart. Your heart will guide you in the right direction. You know, sometimes you'll, you'll read something. And it won't even be in that direction. It'll take you off in a whole nother one. But you wouldn't have you wouldn't have caught that vision if you hadn't looked over there. You know exactly. So, That's the whole point for me. You know, like, the sleight of hand. Like I thought I was gonna learn about this, but holy crap, I got like forty other things I'm into now. <laughs> <laughs> it's never ending. It's yeah, never it's ending. Never because once you go down the red, once you take the red pill and you go down the <laughs> hole. I mean, there, that's it. There's like, there's always a, a slight moment where you can kind of crawl back up and be like, that's not for me. <laughs> I don't want to know that. But once you kind of miss that and you go down, you're, you're you're going down. Yeah, it'll keep calling you. It'll keep yep. calling you. That's for sure. Well, I'm I'm grateful that it called you, <laughs> and uh, and I'm hoping. I know that we've we've only touched the iceberg, and I know that there are so many more books coming from you, straight on out. Next time we're going to hear some poetry, right? You know, I have. Well, it's possible, but I, if you want, if you want really to to talk to one of the greatest poets, uh, who happens to be in your area, he's from Tacoma. He's like mm-hmm. the Seattle Slam champion. Uh, he's a community activist. He's amazing, Josh Reisberg. Uh, huh. I'll put you. I'll put you in touch with him, and you'll he'll blow your mind. You will love to talk to him. I guarantee it. I would so, love to. Well, I'm gonna put, you, I'm gonna you got put my in info. <laughs> for sure, I will absolutely. And uh, we'll, we'll talk again, anyways. I have. You're right. I have a lot of books, you know, coming out, and I'm. I have one. My next one, I think. Well, two of them that are coming out next year that uh one about transhumanism you know uh-huh. and, and kind of like, yeah like you know this real spirituality exactly mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. the, the which is the real game of the illuminati i mean that's like that's their ultimate goal and that's what they're pushing us toward now uh we're halfway mm-hmm. through it basically already so um you know you kind of look outside and everybody's on their phone a little smartphone they don't even have they're like zombies they don't have a clue so you true. know no one no one really talks to each other anymore. It's, it's strange, you know. And I'm in South Beach, you know. I'm in a, a place where, you know, I <laughs> see a lot of people from all over the world. And it's quite quite frightening, actually. Uh, so mm-hmm. that's coming out. And then I also have a book on Elvis conspiracies. Ah. And, and, you know, Elvis, and it was, which what I loved about it is I really didn't know anything about Elvis before I started the book. So it's, I'm having, I'm, I'm enjoying myself, and I'm learning about Elvis, and there's a whole, a whole culture, you know, that whole period in time, uh, which so far removed from me and a lot of people actually nowadays, uh, like the whole generation now. I mean, what what people think of music is so sad, and, you know. It's, that's a whole other topic, of course, you know. It is, it is, it's amazing, you know, but it speaks to our power. You know, that whatever we focus in numbers upon, 
it expands. And if we can just move that in a direction that's going to serve all for the benefit of everybody, uh, right. we'd be moving in the right direction. <laughs> Thank you.